Indonesia, a lush archipelago in Southeast Asia, is not only a paradise for breathtaking landscapes, but also for a rich coffee culture. This culture, deeply rooted in the country's history and traditions, has become a significant aspect of Indonesian identity. Known for its unique flavors and varieties, Indonesian coffee has earned a prominent place in the global coffee market. In this video, we delve into the vibrant world of Indonesian coffee culture, revealing the intricacies of its coffee varieties and the profound influence they have worldwide. The history of coffee in Indonesia is as fascinating as the country itself. It began in the early 17th century when the Dutch East India Company introduced Arabica coffee to the fertile lands of these islands. This introduction marked the beginning of a profound change in Indonesia's agricultural landscape. Over the centuries, coffee plantations flourished. Tradition evolved with the country's history over the generations. From the bustling coffee stalls, known as Warung's Kopi, that line the streets of Jakarta, to the quiet and sprawling plantations in the highlands of Sumatra and Java, coffee is a thread that runs through Indonesian society. Indonesian coffees are as diverse and flavorful as its islands. Let us take a look at the unique characteristics of these varieties. In Sumatra, especially in the northern region, the well-known mandaling and gayo varieties are grown. These arabica beans are known for their full-bodied and complex flavor profile. Mandaling, often described as earthy and herbal, has a rich body and a smooth, lingering aftertaste. Gayo, grown near Lake Tawar, is characterized by its slightly spicy notes and subtle sweetness. The Gailing Basa method, a unique form of wet hulling in Indonesia, is widely used in Sumatra. This process contributes to the coffee's characteristic earthy and spicy flavor. The island of Java, synonymous with coffee, has a long history of coffee cultivation dating back to Dutch colonial times. The rich volcanic soil provides ideal conditions for Arabica beans. Arabica beans from Java are known for their smooth, syrupy body and sweet finish. Coffee from the region is often characterized by a balanced blend of chocolatey undertones and a mild, spicy finish, making it a favorite among coffee lovers. Bali Kintamani coffee is an Arabica variety grown in the highlands of Kintamani near Mount Batur and benefits from the volcanic soils and unique microclimate of the region. Bali Kintamani coffee is known for its floral and citrusy notes and offers a lighter and brighter cup than its Javanese or Sumatran counterparts. Coffee cultivation in Bali is often combined with citrus trees, which contributes to the citrusy undertone of the coffee. Organic cultivation is also widespread here, which makes the coffee even more attractive. Celebes Colossi coffee from the ancient Taraja region of Sulawesi is known for its full-bodied, creamy texture and syrupy sweetness. These beans tend to have a lower acidity, which sets them apart from other Indonesian varieties. The coffee's profile contains notes of ripe fruit and dark chocolate, with a velvety mouthfeel that is highly sought after by coffee drinkers. The traditional Taraja houses and rugged mountains provide a picturesque backdrop for coffee growing in this region and add a cultural richness to the coffee. Each of these regions not only contributes to the diversity of flavor of Indonesian coffee, but also tells a story about the unique geography, climate and cultural practices that shape coffee production. Indonesia is also known for a couple of unique coffee brewing methods. Kopi Joss originates from Yogyakarta, a city known for its cultural heritage, and is a special method in which a piece of glowing charcoal is plunged into a cup of black coffee. This brewing technique isn't only unique to Indonesia, but also a hallmark of Yogyakarta's inventive culinary scene. The addition of glowing charcoal to the coffee, which usually takes place immediately after the coffee is poured into the cup, offers a fascinating spectacle. The charcoal crackles and sizzles when it hits the liquid, giving off a light smoky flavor. It's believed that this method reduces the acidity of the coffee, resulting in a smoother drink with a subtle smoky flavor. Kopi Joss is usually served in local warungs or street stalls and offers an insight into the daily life and creative spirit of the locals. This method reflects the Indonesian flair for combining tradition and innovation in their coffee culture. Kopi Tubruk. In this traditional Indonesian method, coarsely ground coffee is brewed with sugar and water to create a strong and thick brew that symbolizes the country's hospitality. Indonesia has also embraced modern coffee trends, including the third wave, which emphasizes artisanal brewing and high-quality beans. 
This has led to the proliferation of specialty coffees that use advanced preparation methods to explore the different flavors of Indonesian coffee. Indonesian warongs are bustling social centers where people of all ages come together. These informal, often roadside eateries serve as community spaces for locals to socialize over a cup of coffee. These places embody the Indonesian tradition of gotong royong, a spirit of community cooperation and mutual support. Indonesia's influence on the global coffee scene is both significant and far-reaching. As one of the largest coffee producers in the world, Indonesia has a profound influence on global coffee culture and trends. Indonesia exports a wide range of coffees, with Sumatra and Java coffees being particularly prized in international markets. The flavor profiles of these coffees, shaped by Indonesia's volcanic soil and climate, have captivated coffee drinkers worldwide. Indonesian coffee finds its way to numerous countries around the globe. Through an extensive network of trade routes, Indonesian beans contribute significantly to the global coffee supply and influence coffee culture far beyond the country's borders.